Carl and Lou here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life, GBHBL.com for short. And we're back. First one of 2022. Excuse us. Time has just been wild. It's gone, yeah. yeah. It's gone so quick already. So we haven't been able to uh, get to watch as many as we wanted mm. to, let alone record the videos for them. But we are back. It is the nasties, of course, as we are nearing the latter portion of this series. Hopefully be done by the end of 2022, yeah. considering they go up once every two weeks. We are touching upon, you've probably seen the title already, one of the more famous nasties, more famous movies in that it's well beloved yeah. and appreciated and treated yeah. almost like an art film these days, yeah. but not often remembered for being a nasty. It was. In fact, it mm. ran into more trouble else outside the UK than anything else, mm. it seems. The UK had, you know, had little trims here and there and stuff yeah. like that, but compared to elsewhere, yeah. it seemed like it was getting battered left, right and centre. Of course, it's Tanabre which literally translate to darkness, but also known as Tenebrae, mm. without the A, and Unsane, which I fucking hate. Yeah, I don't Absolutely know. I hate that title. Yeah. 1982 Italian giallo film written and directed by Dario Argento. Obviously legendary for many, many of his movies. A man mm. very dear to my heart, thanks to freaking and destroying my childhood after seeing Demons. Oh, yes. Always. Yeah. Absolutely. The film stars Anthony Francisco as an American author Peter Neal, yeah. mm -hmm. who, while in Rome promoting his latest murder mystery novel, becomes embroiled in a search for a serial killer who seems to or potentially may have been inspired by his novel. His yeah. novel is Tenabre. Uh, the cast. There's a fair few characters, so I'm just choosing yeah, the, the main, main ones. Yeah. And it's, aside from Anthony Francisco, mm -hmm. who plays Peter Neal, we've got Giuliano Gemma, which is Detective Gemani. And Carlo Stagnario is Detective Alteri. So they're the two people that are investigating yeah. the serial killer throughout. A man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Play a prominent role in this. Elsewhere, we've got the legendary John Saxon as Bulma. Uh, yes. uh, that is Peter's agent. Mm -hmm. um, he's fun in this. I yeah. think it's quite an animated role for him. It's different for it's him. It's a bit like, oh, unusual, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to use like, the stiff, po stiff poker face. Kind he, of, very yeah. much so. So he's quite, he's quite energetic in this. Yeah. It's quite interesting. And Daria Nicolodi as Anne, who plays his assistant. Mm -hmm. So, there are a lot of details about this movie. Mm. Trivia, so much stuff yeah. that pulling it all out would just take far too long. And you want to know more about it, go read it. But I did pull out some of the things that I thought were the most interesting yeah. aspects to it. Argento was inspired by a series of incidents which saw an obsessed fan telephone him to criticise him for the damaging psychological, psychological effects of his previous work. Oh. The telephone call was culminated in death threats towards mm. Argento, who channeled the experience into the writing of Tanabri. Wow. Wow. Would, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm. The director also wanted to explore the senselessness of killings he had seen and heard about while staying in LA in 1980. And his feeling at the time that the true horror came from those who wanted to kill for nothing. Yeah. There is always an interesting aspect to that. It's kind of why, like, I, I, it's not horror, but use um, Heath Ledger's The Joker as an example. Mm. Some men just want to watch the world burn. It's not, yeah. there's no motive. It's just, it's, I'm a killer. Yeah. I'm a bad person. Yeah. That kind of thing. Of course, his relationship with Goblin continued with this with former members of the Italian rock band, providing a lot of the music for it. Synth heavy score, of course. It was, yeah. Of course. And it was a good soundtrack. Yeah, it always good. are. Yeah. Our general movies, uh, or even a lot of Italian Diallo movies, full stop, yeah, have good. a good synth yeah. score. Funky. You really remember it. Yeah, yeah, it can be quite funky at times. It can yeah. also be quite sinister. It's synth. It's great. This movie averages a murder every 10 minutes. Nice. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. So it ranks as one of Argento's most violent films in the UK, because it is, of course, a nasty. The film was Sean five seconds that's it okay. five seconds and taken from the arm severing scene at the end mm. so the most violent murder yeah. in the movie that thing uh this actually happened before its theatrical release in 1983 so it was all golden at this point the advertising campaign for tanabre featured posters in a soundtrack sleeve that depicted a woman with a throat cut oh. here's problems with blood dripping from the wound according to jones who worked for tanabre's distributor at the time the UK, the posters had to be recalled after, and I threw this in just because of my association, London Underground went, nope, not running those in our, in our system. Of course, I work for London Underground. Oh, imagine people trying to, get, kind of trying to get hold of them. Oof, oof. That'd be like a thing to have, wouldn't it? But yeah, I mean, it, yeah, like, of course they're going to refuse yeah. to do that. Yeah. New posters were issued that replaced the image of the wound in the blood with a red ribbon, and a similar change was made to the soundtrack sleeve. Much more simple. 
Tanabra has been released on home media in many different versions in numerous territories. In 1983, when the VHS edition was released in the UK, it was short by four seconds mm. this time. So one extra second was put back. However, because insanity reigned supreme, the film ended up being one of the 39 video nasties that were successfully prosecuted and banned in the UK under the old you know, Video Recordings yeah. Act from 1984. The ban lasted till 1999. Oh, wow. Wow. When Tanabra was legally released on videotape with one second of footage removed, in addition to the previously censored five. What? So they actually made it longer. But as of 2003, the BBFC reclassified the film and passed it without any cuts. We watched this movie, and like we often do, we're like, why is this a nasty? Yeah, there was nothing. What we came forward. down to, mm. do you remember what we eventually agreed on? the sexualization of the murders and how it seems yeah. to be predominantly done to women yeah. and stuff like that. And we thought that was at best it. When we got to the final death, uh, the pre well, not the final death, but the, the one that was shown several times through yeah. the arm being cut off, we did acknowledge that was pretty violent and gory. Yeah. But we were still like... Compared to what someone else... Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I think this one fell into this camp purely by association more than anything else. Mm. Simply because they were just grabbing it because of the Italian giallo probably who the director lumping was it in, yeah. lumping it all into one without really paying that much attention yeah. it's fascinating to see like I said how little was cut pre-theatrical release five seconds yeah. trimming off that arm severing scene you're like okay it's not the end of the world no it really isn't no. and that's about 2003 so pre-hostel so a couple of years before because I, I, I always use hostel as a great example of where it shows times had changed yeah, uh, in regards yeah. to classifications but pre that totally uncut which you can view any way you want now so we are going to run through a bit of the story. Mm -hmm. Peter Neal, we always said, American writer of violent horror novels. He visits Italy to mow his latest work, to Narbre. Yeah. Let's talk about Peter Neal and the actor that plays him, Anthony Francisco. Mm. Bloody brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Captivating. Easy to watch. Mm. Likeable as fuck. Yeah, like level-headed as well. When, mm. like, when the first murders come around and it's like, oh, your books? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I've got nothing. Assist the police. Seems yeah. smart. Seems cultured. Yeah. Really okay. interesting. Hmm. I, I, I love them. I love yeah. them. Really, one of the strongest um, lead characters I've seen in a nasty. Yeah, because a lot of them, a lot of them, are just bad acting. Yeah, bad acting and just really clunky. But I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm on board with this. Yep, yeah, was yeah. down with it as well. Uh, on this trip, he's accompanied by his literary agent, Bulma, which is John Saxon, who, as he said, playing mm. quite an animated role. There's this really, there's uh, many times throughout Tanabre, mm. there are these really unique scenes. That often feel cutterly pointless, mm. but now I think works to the charm. And one of them was John Saxon and the hat. Oh, yeah. The hat. And it's like tw 10, 15 seconds where he's just like, look at his hat. It's really yeah. weird. And we were like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> but we lo I ended up loving yeah. it because it really stood out in my, my memory. I was like, because I'd never seen Jack Saxon with a big smile on his face, yeah. really happy about the hat. Well, so when he walks towards the end, maybe it's just like, you kind of go, oh, okay, he was just... I don't know. It's just yeah. many times. I mean, obviously, this movie also features one of the more famous, very early uses of a crane shot from the apartment building that goes up across yeah. and all that. That's about two, I think I, I read it's two and a half minutes long. A um, bit of a slog, but it, at the time, it was seen as quite revolutionary yeah. and very expensive effect to do. <laughs> and of course, his assistant Anne, uh, previously said, played by Dario Nicolidi. Mm -hmm. She's okay. Yeah. She's pretty much forgettable. We get this weird point midway where it, it kind of... Because the film is constantly trying to hint that maybe this person's a killer and that person's yeah. a killer and stuff like that, that she has some sort of on-off relationship with Peter yeah. because they seem to spend a night together. Yeah, so it's got to hit his walls out. Mm. Uh, just before Neil arrives in Rome, we see Elsa, who's a young female shoplifter, being murdered by a razor by an unseen assistant. Mm. A lot of the deaths in this are random people that have next to no relation to the movie. Yeah. I thought that was really, really interesting as well, because it's like, why is that a link? And we start off with this person here, and it's like, mm. who is that? Yeah. Where we, well, uh, you know, well, you expect it to go somewhere, but it's not. It's just a random killing, which yeah. ties into what Argento wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, the, murder, the murderer ends up sending Neil a letter informing him that his books have inspired him to go on a killing spree. So you've got that aspect. Very Zodiac. Yeah. You know? I like that. Mm. Neil is then obviously contacted by the police in the form of Detective Gimani and his partner, Inspector Altieri. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them, of the two, the woman, Altieri, she kind of just takes a backseat role. Yeah. That never really does or says anything. Whereas Gimani is yeah. quite talky he's got quite a lot of lines and all yeah. that i quite like him in this though mm, he's good in it but yeah you want them to be both like good cop bad cop 
It'd be a bit more interesting where she kind of just comes across, I dare I say, almost like his assistant. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. More killings take place. We t- see Tildy, a lesbian journalist, is murdered yeah. at home along with her lover, Marlon. Uh, Marion. Marlon. Lady, is that the lady with the... Uh, well... It is. We'll talk about that now. So the reason why... You might go, why, you used, why, why bring out the lesbian part? It's because it's important to actually this movie. Mm. The movie wants you to know she's a lesbian. They want yeah. to know that they're a gay couple. Mm. We'll also get this... Bi- very... I think she's bisexual. Oh, yeah, yeah. One of them is bisexual because yeah. she brings a man home. Yeah, she's um, jealous. That's Marion. Yeah. And Marion is the one that gives most of the nudity. Yeah. For some reason, she wears a towel that exposes one of her breasts completely. She's got nice... She's got very nice boobs. Oh, yeah, she's a nice figure. She yeah. looks great, absolutely. But it's weird we get this... Maybe really... horrible. <laughs> that's why yeah um, we get this weird lengthy scene so this is where you use the crane shot of the apartment mm. for this lot we also get this scene where they're, they're rowing about Marion's behaviour yeah. and stuff like that and you're like okay are you going to be that important to this because it should be noted as well Tildy earlier on in the movie confronts um, Neil Neil Peter mm. uh, about the fact that in his novels women are predominantly killed and aspects yeah. like that because they're trying to link that up we were like whoa she gets really too aggressive but then as the interview ends mm. they're like arranged to have another one somewhere else they're really friendly to each other like they already know each other Yeah. it was quite again quite unique take yeah. on things like the professional head went on and sh- on for her and she went on the attack over yeah. something that obviously bothered her yeah you know fan base, like someone has written into her going look are you about this kind of question but obviously it ties into Argento and his own real life experiences as well which once you know you kind of get a bit more and yeah. I really like that but yeah they're both killed after this very lengthy sequence of events yeah. uh, Maria the young daughter of Neil's landlord she's hacked to death with an axe after she discovers the killer's lair probably the longest and potentially most drawn out sequence yeah. involves this girl as she runs 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 then doesn't get chased by a dog for even longer tries yeah. to hide and then gets into a um gets into the killer's lair where she discovers yeah. all like photos and things like that your, your, your traditional killer's lair <laughs> basically yeah. yeah although it's a house it's a nice Italian house yeah. she ends up in the basement of it yeah. I like parts of this but the dog sequence and stuff like that is it's just really really long yeah. uh, through this as well Neil trying to help the police and kind of deduce his own thing mm. he notices that TV inter- interviewer Cristiano Berti when he talks to him is really interested in a lot of the detail of his work yeah. you have a conversation pre an interview and he asks some surprising questions that kind of throw Peter off a bit yeah, like, mm. I really like this because I th- I take it as just an, an interview that's done his work yeah so it's research absolutely but yeah. Peter takes it as a bit like that's a bit weird and stuff like mm. that and that's it we move well, it's on probably cause it's, got, it's probably because it's probably because his hackles are raised anyway it's difficult, of so, course. He's yeah. part of a book tour and things like that. He's going to come like, across, and it's difficult because mm. people are questioning his writing method, mm. like not methods, but some of the things he writes it's about. That, yeah. So suspicious of him, Neil and his Italian assistant Gianni, they end up visiting Bert's house, sneaking in through the garden, mm. that kind of thing. I love how this is shot. So basically, it looks like the same garden that the um, the, the, the Neil's landlord yeah. daughter had run into but he's shooting from different angles yeah so you can't quite work out yeah, if it is yeah. that's really clever because i'm like mm. no i remember saying to you no it's not the same garden because there was a massive pool it's not it's because we're now from a different, different side angle, angle. Yeah, and like how clever is that to hide it dumb. it yeah. really really is a uh, johnny wants to approach approaching the house alone to get a better view and he actually sees bertie being confronted by someone in his house mm. and then killed with an axe absolutely traumatized by this he doesn't see the killer's face he runs back to neil who's been apparently knocked out yeah. uh hit with a rock he's got blood in his head yeah. and all that and unconscious they both kind of get up and um run away yeah. and leave neil doesn't remember what happened to him diana can't quite remember what happened because he's been traumatized by this i will say the actor does a good job yeah. of portraying really that traumatized because yeah. ultimately it's an excuse to be like oh i don't remember anything yeah but no he doesn't well enough no. to i Believe buy it yeah, yeah absolutely uh Jamani, he ends up discovering, because obviously the police are called, that Bertie was obsessed with Neil. And he actually was the killer. Um, and now that he's dead, the killings will stop. Because it was the killer's lair. He's got all the stuff yeah. there. It was yeah. him. But the film doesn't end there. So you notice something more. Yeah. And the first thing we get is Bulma, who we now discover is having an affair with the woman Jane, who is basically someone who's briefly cropped up a couple of times. Yeah. And we were baffled over her relationship for the longest time. Yeah, but basically, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, It didn't make it quite clear, because she seems like she's unhinged. It seems like she followed Peter to Italy, but it's mm. trying to stay low-key. Yeah. Because they occasionally see her and they're like, oh, is that Jane? Yeah. 
Turns out she's Peter's ex, ex fiance, yeah. which do make clear by the end of the movie, yeah. but we really needed it to be made clear just, just earlier, earlier. Yeah, because she's more. one of the biggest suspects. Yeah. And we're like, who, who is this bloody yeah. person? But Bomb has been having an affair with her. Mm. Absolutely. And when he arranges to meet her in this square, he stabbed to death in the public. Mm. In public. So basically, the killer, this new, this killer, whoever it is, walks up to him mm. and just stabs him in the stomach and walks off quickly. Yeah. It's a crowded place. Bomb would take falls over and then people react. It's, it's cool. believable, yeah. It's believable. Yeah. It's believable. Uh, Gianni B is haunted by he thinks he might have missed something important at Bertie's house. So he returns to the house. And from there he remembers hearing Bertie say to someone, I killed them, I killed them all. Before, you know, revealing obviously yeah. that he was talking to someone else and he was the actual killer. But before Gianni could share that detail, he is actually murdered mm. in the backseat of his car, strangled to death. So more, so many deaths. Yes, yeah, it's, it's constant. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like who done it? Slasher horror. Yeah. I remember us saying at this point, we were like, well, "That's most of the cast done." Yeah. Like, that's most of the cast done. We, yeah. We thought I was that person. Oh no, they're gone. And it's like, okay, we have to be getting somewhere here, and we kind of do now as we yeah. kind of enter the twilight stage of the movie. As we then focus on Jane, obviously she found uh, her um, Bulma. Mm. She actually walks up and finds him dead. And she doesn't really react, which had us obviously very suspicious yeah, as well. Yeah, we're like, hmm, you'd be a bit upset about that. But she ends up calling Peter. Mm. And uh, no, she calls Jane mm. with almost like a suicide kind yeah. of thing. And we see she's sitting at her kitchen table with a pistol. But she's then attacked from behind by a killer mm. jumping through the window who hacks off one of her arms. This is the goriest death yeah, of the movie. Got yep, this is the one that was snipped, snipped, snipped. Uh, blood spraying all over the kitchen walls, you know. Oh, yeah. It's quite, quite graphic which before she falls to the floor. The killer then continues to hack at her until she's dead, stabbing over and over again. So it does continue. And then we kind of pan up and we're both like, I think we kind of worked it out at this point. We're like, oh, it's mm, Peter. Yeah. It's Peter. And it is. It's Peter Neal. Basically, upon learning the details of Bertie's sadistic murder spree, Neil, he has been suffering from a memory which he could never place. Mm. We're going to get backtrack a little yep. section here. A repressed memory which involved him murdering a girl who basically sexually humiliated him when he was a youth in Rhode Island. The movie has done a terrible job of explaining this. Yeah. So several times throughout the movie, we'll flash back to, um, from a POV mm. of this woman kind of being amorous to a group of boys. Yeah. This other boy comes up and he kind of tries to touch her. Yeah. It's and then they beat beat him down and stamp on his groin and stuff like that. Yeah. Later we see him watching her from the bushes and that's where he ends up stabbing her and all that. Yeah. We were so confused. We yeah, were like, like who, what? is it the mother? Who is that? Is it a sister? What's going on? We could not work it out. Yeah, we thought like he said like he was watching his mother being gang, like, in a gang, gang raped, that yeah. kind of thing. Because truth be told as well, we're used to that kind of thing yeah. in these Part nasties. The course, so nasty. naturally we went to the dark, I think we, I think we went to the darkest thing yeah. possible. It's still pretty dark, obviously yeah. murdering a girl who um, sexually rebuffed him, embarrassed him. Yeah. But like, it was like, oh, you, you could have told that better. Yeah. You could have really explained that a little better because yeah. there's no dialogue in these no. scenes, I think. There might be like a hold him down, that kind of thing. But yeah, that's but about I think it. you explaining it. Nothing no. at all. But yeah, that memory apparently tormented Neil and uh, has inflamed his previous repressed lust for mm. blood, driving him insane, uh, seeing all these murders that happened around him. There is a couple of hints earlier on that it could be going this way. Yeah. And it's particularly when he seems to be suggesting that he could use what's happening around him as inspiration for further work. Yeah. He kind of dismissed that as that just being a macabre horror writer. Yeah. But, you know, okay. Yeah. Don't but know. because of... And here's the problem. It's not a good reveal and twist if you've made it difficult to actually get there. Yeah. The memory the, the memory stuff made it difficult to get to Peter. Yeah. You could do lots of links and, oh, this is why, and this is why, and this mm. is why. But that memory thing is the constant thorn. And you're like, well, how does that come into it? Yeah. Absolutely fucking weird. But, yeah, so... But he's been caught as Inspector Otari arrives at the house. Neil kills her. But Jamani and Anne arrive soon afterwards. And Neil is caught. He's got a gun up. He tries to explain himself. But then commits suicide by slitting his throat. Yeah. We were like, oh, wow. Yeah. Come on, go out. Incredible. That's it, it seems. Still not quite done. No. Finding the telephones out of order. Jamani and Anne go outside to report the incident from the car radio. But for some reason, Jamani goes back into the house. And then finds Neil's body gone. He's gone. Cool. We're like, okay. And we do get a lovely shot as where he sort of stands up and then Neil's behind him. Yeah. And Neil then kills him and they kind of get a brief sort of thing of realisation that he, he faked his death. Yeah. We see the razor. Oh. Uh, it squirts a... blood. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely lovely. He kills Jamani and uh, Neil, Anne starts to come back. So Neil hears her coming and plans to kill her. 
but accidentally she opens the door and knocks a sculpture, a big metal sculpture yeah. that ends up impaling Neil through the chest and pinning him to the wall. He dies and screams and that's the end of the film. It's a hell of an ending. Yeah. Just that old combination of everything. I think it's um I it's just I think it's just cleverly done. Overall, yeah. for all the sort of things that we can complain mm. about, whether it be overtly extended scenes, scenes yeah. uh, purposely trying to trip us up with ill, ill, poorly explained yeah. flashbacks or sequence of events, the quality of the movie stands out, man. Yeah. This is a top tier horror movie, not just a nasty, a top tier yeah. horror movie because it's a really well told story with really interesting characters. Taking a slasher formula, but making it quite interesting. Like a whodunit. Very much so. Yeah, it's like, a mystery oh, to the yeah, end. Yeah. Like, all those movies that come later, your screams that want, left it to the very end to reveal yeah. a killer. This is the shit that inspired. Yeah, Do you definitely. know what I mean? This is the shit that inspires stuff like that. I'm sure there are a thousand, if not more, directors out there will go, yeah, horror directors will yeah. say, yeah, Tanabra inspired me to do this, inspired yeah. me to do that. It also feels quite modern. Consider it's an Italian yeah. giallo, they always have a feel to it. Mm. It feels quite modern, thanks to a lot of the clever techniques. Obviously, we heavily praised throughout the the hiding of the killer's lair by mm. positioning and taking different shots from the garden. We were critical of the crane shot purely because it felt too, too long. long. Yeah. But, you know, I understand the difficulties and the scope of imagination because I did say to you at the time, remember, I was like, man, that's a tracking shot. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. No cuts. Do that. Problem was, we were like, at the end of it, we were like, it, what was we, the point of it? Yeah, where were we taking it? Like, it didn't take us anywhere in particular. You went from the bottom of the house, up, left, back down. Yeah, we're like... It was like, oh. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But now I realise, and I reflect on the overall movie, that the movie has these scenes mm. all the way throughout. It just mm. make you go, oh, okay. That was weird. Yeah. But it makes it more charming. Yeah. I think. As a horror movie... I don't think it's scary or anything like that. I don't no. think it's really got a thing. I don't think it even does tension great because ultimately our killer is so random and often we join as a killing is about to occur. Yeah. So you already know it. When you're introduced, particularly after you get over the shock of the first one, yeah. and you're introduced to a character or characters that are the minor and suddenly we're not going to spend time with you, you're like, okay, yeah. game over. The only thing I will praise is that we generally could not have worked out as Neil. No. No, at all. He was so helpful to the police. And... Yep. It made no sense. We went through everybody. Yeah. And we're like, oh, they're dead now. Yeah. Like, we were at Bulma at one point. Obviously, we were convinced it was, uh, what's her name? The ex, Jane, yep. as well. We even went as far as thinking it was Anne. Yeah. And then we went down, and Anne was the only one that wasn't dead by the end. Yeah. But at that point, it was pointless anyway. One of the things I will remember this film for more than anything, though, is how it, how it shot Italy. How it shot mm. the location. We get a lot of stuff. A wide array of locations. Yeah. A lot of stuff done outside. Sound is fucking mwah yeah, for that stuff really as well. Yeah. Really, really strong stuff. That's stuff on a picture. A picture, um, Saxon, mm. out in the square. And yeah. he spends a little time. It's a little bit of a long scene as well. And he got these nice shots of fangs, people walking around and all that. Stuff that we normally see in an Aston. We're like, well, that's just there be because of all <laughs> Did, Didn't board. feel like it for this. It felt like it was... Part of it. So yeah. important to it. Mm. Really, really strong stuff. Strong cast, strong characters. Decent amount of gore. You know, we said at the start, nasty, what we define nasties are, it's not even close to that. Hence why it's completely uncut now. There's nothing here that will shock or offend. The closest I can get mm. to a moment that might make me go, <gasps> the, the lesbian woman who has her boob exposed yeah. for it, there's a point where they row. Yeah. And she's standing at the top of the stairs and she changes position, her stance to sort of sort of stand like into attention. Yeah. And the towel flings open. And I thought for a second they were going to do, she was going to rip it off and they were going to do full frontal nudity at the yeah. top of the stairs. But it doesn't. It just hangs stuff. Except now it's kind of like split down the middle there yeah. instead. Do you remember that scene? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? That, yeah. that made me go... Because it was just like, it's so sudden. Yeah. At that point, she's been doing a weird toga thing with, with the boob out. Yeah. You know? It was just like, oh my God, we're actually full frontal nudity. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> no it was it was golden it was golden it was a good time it was an enjoyable movie that we watched particularly as well during a period where we were quite sleepy and tired yeah. because of our long weeks of work and not having much time this kept our attention yeah definitely. we talked about it it ended and we were like okay cool let's yeah. talk about a little about this yeah you know it was, it was a nasty i was looking forward to doing while also dreading because talking about these movies that are so famous and mm. big and have so much detail and been studied yeah Kind of makes it seem like, well, what the fuck are we going to say? How can we yeah. 
properly portrayed. But it portrayed. is just our opinion, isn't it? So That's all it is, our opinion. But our opinion is, is an account of this is an excellent, excellent movie. Yeah. If When I write the review for it in the site, eventually, this is easily eight, yeah. maybe even to nine, because yeah. of just how brilliant it is. For me, it's not my favourite Argento work purely because of my association and love of demons. Yeah. That's it. But it's certainly probably second to it now. Yeah. You know, certainly. Good film. Tanabre, what do you reckon? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?